going to turn this into a class object so that we can have multiple objects moving on screen using arrays. This is attempt number two since the recording crashed during the first go. So I'll try to power through this. Currently it's set up where we are declaring our object explicitly within our program using the same kind of setup that we've used prior. The ball moves in a random direction starting at a random place with a random color and the direction is determined by the speed which is minus 5 to 5 both x and y. So we'll just let that play in the background while we convert this over to a class based object. So to do that we will just be migrating most of what's here over. So I have my variables, I construct my object there and then it has the different methods that will be part of the object that we have access to. So to create the new class file I will add a new tab and doing so it adds a new file in this case I will call it ball and when I do that I now have a blank space. Type in class ball and then a bunch of curly braces to round it out. The next thing I need to do is establish my properties and then I will establish my constructor and then I will set up my methods. The properties are the aspects that make up each instance of this class. The constructor is what we call when we instantiate a new instance and the methods are the things that this class knows how to do. Now that we have the items over here I am going to cut them out of that project and paste them in this file. And you can see as we do that we're setting things up. So now we can pull these items for the constructor out, go into ball. Now those go inside a special function. This is our constructor function. The constructor function does not have a return type, so it doesn't begin with the word void like other functions. And now as I put that in, we can see where it's still looking pretty much about the same. The next thing we need to do is go grab the methods that this item will know how to do. We can leave these here. They're airing out at the moment because we've removed them and I will then put the methods in. So the ball class is done. The ball knows how to update, display, and check its own boundaries. It can be constructed so each instance will get its own x, y, width, and height, and color, and speeds, and there the properties are defined at the beginning. So we're done with the ball class for now, and now it comes time to add it to our project. So I'll say ball B and then to instantiate a class object we just say B is equal to new ball and we define that ball. Ball then knows how to do a bunch of different things. One of the things ball knows how to do is to update. Update also includes how to check for its own boundaries and then our ball will also know how to display. So when we do this and run it, it's going to look exactly the same as before except the ball will show up in a new color with a new speed and start at a new location. The real magic isn't that we've done this. The real magic is when instead of having one ball, we're going to have lots of balls. So we create an array of objects of type ball and I'll just call this balls. And now to populate it, what we have to do is say balls is equal to new and then confirm that we want this array to be of type ball. So this array holds a bunch of balls in it. And I will then put in just a number and we'll just say 50. So now this array is going to hold 50 balls. To populate that, we could do it one at a time, ball zero is equal to new ball, ball one, etc. Or we can use a for loop that we know how to do. So we say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 50, but arrays also have a cool property, and that is length. So we can say i is less than balls dot length, and then i plus plus. Now that we have accomplished that, we are set to say balls and then we say at position zero will be equal to new ball this. 
And each time we go through this loop, it takes i as zero, so it sets the first object in the array at zero, then at index position of one, it creates a new ball in the index position two, all the way up through 49, since we have 50 up here. So we're able to create all of these objects inside our project. The next thing what we're able to do is we're able to then have a for loop that will then be putting these on screen. So once again, for int i is equal to zero, i is less than balls dot length, i, i plus plus, a couple curlies with the return and up arrow, and now we just simply grab that item at i in our array and we tell it to update and balls display. So looks almost the same except now we're going through the loop but this loop allows us to do it 50 times very quickly. Now if I run this technically we will have 51 balls appear on our screen. And we can see that's really cool. And now if I go and take this 50, say I put it up to 100 and run it again, now it's getting way more interesting. Maybe I want to go up to 500 and run it again. So we're able to add to our project quickly and easily, much more so than if we were trying to do a single object at a time. So now there's 501 balls running on screen. If I want to get rid of that original one, we can just comment that out. It's no harm, no foul at the moment. And now we're to 500 of these beautiful colored balls bouncing around on screen.